Good morning, mighty men. As the first great awakening was beginning, John Wesley saw the necessity of small group fellowship as a means to prevent converts and revive souls from falling away. The people were hungry for this kind of fellowship and this kind of follow-up. So numerous groups were started and personally nurtured by Wesley. And he wrote this, They therefore united themselves in order to pray together, to receive the word of exhortation, and to watch over one another in love, that they might help each other to work out their salvation. This is only one condition previously required in those who desire admission into society, a desire to flee from the wrath to come and to be saved from their sins. And he also wrote this, these therefore wanted some means of closer union. They wanted to pour out their hearts without reserve, particularly with regard to the sin which still easily beset them and the temptations which were apt to prevail over them. And they were the more desirous of this when they observed it was the express advice of an inspired writer, quote, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed, end quote. Well, today we would call these accountability groups Wesley's groups were the means by which the coming revival would be sustained and individuals would be discipled just like in the Bible. In quoting scripture, Wesley wrote, they began to bear one another's burdens and to naturally to care for each other as they had daily a more intimate acquaintance with so that they had more endeared affection for each other. And speaking the truth in love, they grew up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. That's what prayer and revival can do. Our scripture reading today is Philippians chapters 3 and 4, and chapter 3 verse 12 starts in by saying, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made it his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And now I'm going to try to quote from memory a verse I've been working on. That's Philippians 4, 8. Now I'm not going to cheat. Here we go. Uh, finally, brothers, uh, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is anything uh, of excellence, anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Philippians 4, 8. Now, I'm not very good at this, but, you know, if I can do this, you can do this. I challenge you. Memorize Scripture. Let's pray. This morning, Lord, we're asking for men to discover the value of accountability. Help us to realize we can't truly be disciples without it. Father, you know the change you've brought in my life by daily communion with a brother like Dick Simmons and now my accountability partners. Empower us, Lord, as we run this race and remind us we don't have to run it alone. We choose today to forget what is behind every failure, every frustration, every heartbreak, and we press on toward the goal to win the prize. You are the prize. We want to be like you, to think like you, to act like you, to dwell on those things that are true and honorable and right and pure and lovely of good repute, excellent and worthy of praise. Fill us with you, Lord, so that we can be like you. We pray in the mighty name and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. If you like this video, subscribe, follow, and share it, please. Shalom.